And there's some, some great companies that are also starting to turn efforts towards biochar. Um, GTZ, um, so that old development there, or um, development funding. And uh, World Bank, Conco Phillips, Shell, UNCCD, these are not all companies, they're not all organizations. Um, the, JR, the Joint Research Commission, uh, Center of the European, European Commission wrote a, a big uh, paper on biochar use in the soils. Um, these, are, these are just some some of the organizations that are starting to say, yeah, biochar is pretty cool, we like it. And biochar gets around. Um, here's some of the recent uh, press coverage on biochar. Then in, most recently there was a four-page spread in the New York Times on biochar on that Nature Communications article that I was talking about, 12% of human GHGs. Uh, but it's also been in The Guardian, Ode, Orion, Popular Science, Scientific American, The Economist. Recently was on Good Morning America. Our friends at Rechar got biochar on Good Morning America. Um, definitely got the sense that the guy who was interviewing him had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> like, yeah, soil, cool. Um, but it was great. Um, and the Discovery Channel and BBC have also done great uh, coverage of Biotra. And just some great quotes from people smarter than me. Um, James Lovelock says, there's one way we can save ourselves, and that is through a massive burial of charcoal. Um, this was in an article on New Scientist. Uh, Jim Hansen, biochar can be used to restore soil fertility while storing carbon for centuries to millennia, replacing slash and burn agriculture with slash and char, and use of ag and forestry waste for biochar production could provide a CO2 drawdown of eight parts per million or more in half a century. And a few more. Um, Al Gore says, one of the most exciting new strategies for restoring carbon to depleted soils and sequestering significant amounts of CO2 for a thousand years and more is the use of biochar. Um, and then from, from Bill McKibben's Plant Suck article, if you could continue, continually turn a lot of organic material into biochar, you could, over time, reverse the history of the last 200 years. We can literally start sucking some of the carbon that our predecessors have poured into the atmosphere down through our weeds and stalks and stick it back in the ground. We can run the movie backward. We can unwind some of the coal, undrill some of the oil. We can take at least pieces of the earth and, this is something that we haven't done for quite a while, leave them better than we found them. So that is part of the promise of Biochar. And this is something I always close my side with. A colleague of mine sent me this, this image. This is a, an ash, a pot of Biochar that became an ashtray. And uh, after a little bit of time, it started growing, growing new little things. So we'll figure it out. We can do it. If, if the plants can do it in a freaking ashtray, we can do it here. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> I'm not going to smoke. I'm going to updraft gasify my lungs. <laughs> Wait, is it top lit? Yeah, too loud. <laughs> Great. Any other questions? Uh, they, as you said in the beginning, the sharing you do uh, more of the bio and char research, uh, you have the uh, therapy at the. Uh, um, and we've been talking about the other benefits, which is you know, the gases that are driven off. We can uh, use them for uh, to make uh, chemicals. We can use it as fuel production. Um, is anyone studying whether um, those tars and those other complicated chemicals that are come off are beneficial to the soil? Because a lot of the slash and burn or whole purple making those tars, those things that we see as undesirable went back into the soil. And as we saw with the Gulf spill, you know, there are microbes that eat hydrocarbons. So are they studying, you know, the biochar just as, as a carbon material or the other gases and so on and so forth that are doing? As far as I know, there is some research being done on that. I don't know enough to say what the results are um, definitively, but I know that people are looking at it. Um, Jim, who will be speaking later, has the hypothesis that the volatile organic carbons can, or compounds can provide a, an early boost to soil productivity, um, whereas the longer term, strictly carbon benefits 
um, and the, the advantages that biochar brings to the soil structure might not be seen until a year or two down the road because it takes a while to just build that soil <coughs> ecosystem, as it were, with all, with all the um, microorganisms and everything. Uh, but yeah, his, his hypothesis is that something with some volatiles initially um, can be beneficial as a, as a plant food because it's accessible to them. Um, and then over the longer term, the cumulative effects of having the carbon in the soil will, will kick in. Um, but it's, it's still at hypothesis stage and there are scientists that would have a lot more to say on that than I would have. So that there's uh, quite a bit of research in Australia and also Asia, particularly um, on slope derived products mm -hmm. um, or wood vinegar, if you want to call it that. And, uh, but, uh, in Australia, we tend to call it slope water, and, and that has germination quality. It has germination. So Steve and Joseph, in particular, is company after Terra, are combining biochar with other mineral compounds and clays smoke water and phosphoric acid, so I'm making some of the things that work several times better than mine, but if you need less of it, you get more of it. You get less emitted by other synthetic fertilizers. See, that sounds like it's a potential to use those volatiles for fuel. Uh, yeah. Because most of our chemicals now are, are petrochemical in nature. If we can actually get those volatiles back out of the biomass that we pulled out of the fields, First place, we get much closer to the whole cycle. Yeah, yeah. But the whole thing with biochar, when you start looking at the way the Japanese have looked at it and stuff over the last decades, it's a lot more sophisticated and exciting in the opportunity. But it's a chapter in my book, chapter 16, biochar means something that does it. So the way you can glance at that, and it's particularly on the subject of combining biochar with other minerals and stormwater. Um, I heard at a conference recently that uh, the average lifespan of a tree in an urban area is around five years, which is a little bit disturbing. And uh, I was wondering if there are any examples where uh, municipalities are experimenting with the biochar to the urban landscaping efforts to um, revitalize their areas. Not as far, I don't know of any projects that are actually happening. Um, at Biotech Engineering, we're in conversation with the city of Boulder, the county of Boulder, and then the main Boulder municipal, um, municipal waste collector. And each of them are both individually and collectively interested in incorporating it in some way into the, the Boulder um, infrastructure and including using it within urban landscaping and stuff like that. But it's still, it's still a good. Well, it's just one piece more accomplished. Ariel's been considering picking up the torch to do that in Berkeley. Nice, great. Berkeley would be another great place for it. The progressive cities are probably a good place to start. And then I've had some conversations with San Francisco. Um, they're, they're interested in potentially starting something like that, but it's very good to say at this point. Hayes Valley Farm, which is where I'm speaking next, is also interested in, in incorporating it and partnering with the city or something like that. So it could happen. It might just be a little while. Project development seems to take a little bit of a longer time than most of us would like. Mm -hmm. Do you have a blog on carbon water or all of the um, there is a carbon worm news blog um, that does cover on a reasonably regular basis what's going on in the in the carbon worms biochar operation. Um, I think it's www slash or dot news dot carbon worm dot com something like that. Um, but yeah, just look up carbon worm news. And I have a blog that I don't think has seen my face for a year. <laughs> Biochar factor. At some point I'll blog again. I just don't seem like I have time. Um, but if you have any questions or anything, or if there's something I mentioned that you want to follow up on or whatever, um, email me really quickly because I'm leaving town for a month tomorrow. <laughs> um, we'll be completely online or offline. Um, or you can just wait and hear back to me when I get back. I want to say thanks to All Power Labs. I really appreciate what you guys are doing.
um, the, the level of community building and, and open source knowledge. I think it's fantastic and it's exactly what Planetary needs. So thanks so much for hosting it. Big applause for you guys.